Okay. Good morning, everyone. Hey. Okay. Happy Easter. Yeah. When, yeah. Happy Easter. When you hear the word Easter, what adjective word can you think of? What describes Easter? Just give me one word. When you hear Easter, what do you shout it out? Forgive. Jesus. Eggs, Easter eggs. Okay. Well, today, as we were worshiping and we were saying what a powerful name it is, I thought Easter means power, victory. Because Jesus conquered death, he won over Satan so that we can be saved. Um, and Jesus did all that because he loves us. And not only does he love us, he has a wonderful plan for our lives. And I'm going to show you today what it means when he said he really loved us and what it means when he has a wonderful plan for us. So you know where was God in the beginning? Where, where is God now? In heaven, yeah. You see, this crown uh, uh, resembles God's power and glory because God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, they are the king of heaven. They are the creator of universe. And, they, and God created you and me so that he can love us and he can take us to live within heaven forever and ever one day. But you know what? There's one problem. Because we have sin in our lives, we, we cannot be with God. There's a wall in between God and us. And there's no way we can go to heaven. That's why God's love sent a solution to our problem. And that solution came through Jesus Christ, his son. You see, 2,000 years ago, baby Jesus was born, God's son. He took down his crown, left it on his throne in heaven, and he became a human being so he can take the punishment for our sins. And when Jesus grew up, and he went all over Jerusalem, Israel, and he taught everybody about God's kingdom, how to be saved, who he is, that he really is the son of God. And he even fed hungry people. He taught a lot about, Jesus, about God. And most of all, Jesus loved the little children. And you know what? Jesus loved to play with them. He loved to put his hands on their heads and bless them. And children love Jesus too, but many people, adults, said, get away, children. Don't you see Jesus is busy? Stay away. Shoo, go away. But Jesus says, stop. Let the children come to me. Don't stop them from coming to me because kingdom of heaven is for the children. And not only that, Jesus touched people who were sick, who were dirty, beggars, people with Diseases that can spread, like leprosy. People will say, ew, get away. Don't come near me. I don't want to get dirty. But Jesus said, Jesus didn't. Jesus touched them, and Jesus said, I love you. Your sins are forgiven. You're healed. You can go home to your family now. That's how Jesus showed his love to the people. And he shows us the same kind of love to us today, too. And last of all, when the time came for Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, Jesus let bad people take Jesus, put him on the cross, whip him, hurt him, say bad things to him, even spit on his face. And then later on, he was hung on a cross to be crucified for our sins. So it was a sad day when Jesus died on the cross. But it was good because if he hadn't died on the cross, our sins would not be forgiven. But the good news is, Jesus didn't stay dead. After three days, what happened? He became alive. He became alive. We call that the resurrection day. So today is that day we celebrate Easter, right? Jesus became alive. And when he became alive, he came with power, victory, because he won. He won against uh, fighting with Satan, right? Fighting against sin. And he conquered sin so that you and I can also conquer sin and be with Jesus. You see, after three days be, of being put in the, uh, in, in, in the tomb, Jesus became alive. He walked out. The angels opened the tombstone, and Jesus came out. And he showed himself to 12 of his disciples and to about 500 people. He was walking around showing, here, look, I'm alive. Touch me. Look at me. I'm alive. 
right? And then after that, about 30, 40 days later, and while everybody was watching, Jesus was taken up to heaven. And Jesus was going up, 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 up in the sky, and everybody was watching him go up. And you know what? When Jesus was still there before on earth, he says, I am going to the Father, I am going to heaven, and I'm going to make a mansion for you. I'm going to build a great house for you so that one day you can come and live with me. And I will take you forever with me, and I will watch over you, and you will be mine. And he says, I will be back. Isn't that wonderful? Do you want to be in heaven with Jesus one day? Yes. But you know what? Knowing about how Jesus was born, knowing about what Jesus did on the cross, and knowing about his resurrection, it's not everything. That's not going to take you to heaven. There's one thing you must do, and that one thing is you must receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You must believe all that that was talk talked about, and you have to accept Jesus into your heart. Just like you accept your mom and dad as your parents, right? Right? Do you love your mom and dad? Just like you accept them as your parents, just, like, just as you love them so much, you have to do the same for Jesus. Here's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to have Jesus come up. This is our Jesus today. And we have a child. Can I have Yejini come up? Okay, so this is Jesus. Your thing is coming. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Is it on? Is it on? Okay, just hold it, okay? So it's like this. And can we have this sh a screen where it shows Revelation chapter? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. And also says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. You know what? Opening the door means opening the door of your heart and letting Jesus into your life. You see there's a door handle here from inside the house, but do you see a door handle here from where Jesus is? No, there is no handle. It's because it's up to you to open the door. Jesus will not open the door. You will have to open the door and let him into your life. Will you, Yejun, uh, open the door of your heart and invite Jesus into your life? Yes. Okay, so open the door, and you have to say this prayer. Can you repeat after me? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, need I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door, I open the door of, my life of my life and receive you as my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. Jesus, take control of my life and make me the kind of person you want me to be. Amen. And Jesus will come into you just like he promised. And I'll show you there's a promise and it's in Hebrew, chapter 13, 5. Can you read this for me, the yellow highlighted part? I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, it says in the Bible, and it is a promise of God, and God never lies. The promise is that once he, Jesus comes into your life, he will never leave you or forsake you. Here's what I mean. Uh, Yejun, can you shake my hands? Okay, this is how we shake our hands, right? Can you let go of my hand? And when you let go of my hand, we get separated, right? But this is not how Jesus takes hold of our hands. Uh, this is Jesus' hand, and this is how Jesus takes hold of your hand. And whether you, like, whether you want to hold Jesus' hand or not, Jesus will never let go of your hand. Okay? So are you ready to start the big journey, the big adventure of living with Jesus until the day you go to heaven? Yeah. Are you ready, you guys? Okay. Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we are thankful, so thankful, that powerful God like you left your heaven, left your crown and your glory, to come to this earth so that you can die for our sins. And you promise in your word that you will never leave us if, if we accept you as our Savior into our lives and in our hearts. 
So Lord, we do that today, and we pray that we will continue to do that and give you love and honor and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.